Hi, this is Myra with Boutique Paint. I'm working on some felt bunnies today. This is my first um, run of it, and I used the hot glue gun to put it together, to glue the seams together, and it worked okay. Um, I do have a little bit of glue goobers, but I could probably take my scissors and kind of cut that. Um, so the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with the sewing machine. And this was um, one that I cut out and I went ahead and uh, sewed it together. And what I found is because I cut um, the two pieces of felt at the same time and it's thick, I got, and then I went to stitch it, there was some spots where I didn't quite get it. So we're going on to the next way to do this. And that's going to be... I'm going to trace around this and I got this bunny off of Pinterest and if you just put in there um, bunny cutouts lots of different things pop up as far as patterns um, this first one was a little bit smaller and I thought well I think I want to make it a little bit bigger although this is a cute size but I with gluing it um, part of the problem is this the glue takes up a little bit more room on the inside than stitching it would. So trying to get um, whatever you're going to stuff into the bunny into like the ears, it's, it's kind of difficult. Um, I decided because I didn't have any um, of the batting out here in my work shed, um, I used lavender to stuff it. So now I have lavender everywhere, but you know. But it, it smells good in here. So what I'm going to do now, and I'm not going to show this part because my sewing machine, I'll have, I would have to move the camera. And I'm not sure how well, because I don't have any lighting over there, how well it would show up. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and make sure that there is enough fabric on that foot. So I'm going to just shift that a little bit. And I'm going to stitch where my purple line is. Now this line is my um, disappearing ink that I use a lot. These are great. Um, they disappear over... Um, on fabric, sometimes they can take up to 72 hours. If you are doing something and you need it gone, you can take a little water and put it on it and it'll disappear right then and there. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and stitch it up. And we'll go from there. Okay, it is super dark over here, like I said, and that's why I didn't want to show the sewing machine part of this, but I also did want to attempt to show you, um, I'm coming up on a pivot spot, and if you're used to sewing, you know this. If you are not used to sewing, then, um, and you, well, this is a great place to start if you want to, you know, try sewing, um, but when you come up to a corner, which I'm going to try to hold the computer, the computer, the uh, phone and film and sew all at the same time. So as soon as you get to a corner, you want to lift your presser foot. And I can't figure out where it is because this is backwards from where, there it is. And you want to just pivot so that the line goes right straight through so the um oh it's blurry um through there's a line here um that you want to line up with the pencil mark or your pen mark and then that way you're turning the corner but make sure your needle is down then lift your presser foot pivot it put your presser foot back down and then you can go Now, when you get to the corner of the bunny ears, you can make the decision if you want to, you know, just make it a V or if you want to go ahead and make a little bit of that separation like it has in the pattern. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm sorry about the quality of this. Like I said, there's not lighting over as good of lighting. I have this just set up on my shipping table because <laughs> I don't have room. We built this, filled it with all the stuff that I sell. And then the other half of it is my uh, area where I 
do my videos and I just don't have enough room for everything I need to do. I'm sure I'm not the only one, am I, out there? So anyway, I will finish sewing this and we will do what we're going to do to this little guy. So he's com he or she is sewn completely around. And the reason why I did this, like I said, is that way you know you're matching up. Um, so now I'm going to take my scissors. I'm just going to go around about a quarter of an inch on the outside of that purple line. And you could do you know, decorative shears uh, around them. I've seen them with the kind of the scallop shears. Make sure I'm in frame there. Um, the scalloped shears they cut them with, and that's super cute. And then I saw one where somebody took um, the felt for the backing and scalloped it and then made the um, top one shorter so the pink scallop of the felt came on the, um, showed, peeked out on the sides, and that was sweet. I did leave an opening at the bottom so that I can stuff it. And like I said, I put lavender in that one and I can still smell it. It's, it's, uh, it smells nice. Sometimes it's easier just to cut and get the extra off. And you need Fairly sharp scissors for this. If your felt is thick, you're cutting through two layers. I have lots and lots of pairs of scissors. How many pairs are sharp? That's a whole different story. So I left it open from here to here. What I should have done is I should have just left it open right here. I am not sure what I was thinking on that. I used to sew a ton when I was younger. I did it for a living also. Um, but that was a lifetime ago. So, you know, you kind of, you get it when you start doing it. But, you know, it's just the little things when you don't do it for a while. All right. So there... So you can turn it over and kind of see. Let me throw that away. Make sure his ears here is a little bit crisper. All right. So in this one, I'm going to use a little bit of fiber fill. And we're just going to open up. You want to take little bits. If you shove too much up in there and one at once, it's hard to manipulate it. And what you do is you put a little bit in there, and I'm going to use a um, the end of a paintbrush. But you can if you you can also use chopsticks. But you need something a little bit blunt on the end, not too sharp, because you don't also want to just poke straight through. So I'm just kind of manipulating the stuffing up into the ear. something a little bit that's too blunt let's see a little fatter I have all these paint brushes out here so I might as well take advantage of the different size now around this ear corner this is going to be a little bit tricky to get um, the stuffing in there one of the things you could do is just uh, leave an opening there stuff from this side from this way and then this way that would work just fine too. My end screen. It's always hard to tell. You know, I get into doing what I'm doing. The next thing I know that <laughs> I think it was my last video. Half of it was, or one section of it, I was completely off screen trying to show 
what I was doing. That's not helpful. So then the rest of it goes really easy. And then I just realized I skipped a step. <laughs> so good thing I didn't get too much further because I was going to stamp on this little guy. Jeez. So I'm going to take the rose from, I believe this one's Rose Toil. Um, and then this is a color I mixed myself. This is tomato and the white uh, mixing. And it's 50-50, I believe. And I just mixed it up. It's great for Valentine's Day. It's great for Easter, spring. It's even good for um, around Christmas. Did I say Christmas? Um, I want a piece of paper so that I don't make a mess. So I was only going to stamp the bottom of this anyway. So, phew. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do an angle. And you really want to kind of work it. Also, which I didn't do, you want to clean these edges. And luckily it didn't do anything. But you want to clean the part of the stamp that, um, you know, this little edge because the ink gets on it. And the problem is, is it's not when you're doing, you know, other projects, it's not usually a big deal, but when you're doing fabric and you're squishing it onto that, then the fabric will grab that. And then you'll have that little line, which you don't want. That looks pretty cute. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit on the back side too. The other, uh, stamp that I thought might be cute on this is the alpha bellies you know you could grab the roses from that or just some of these cute little little ones or you could even do you know this at an angle or these anyway any of them would work but it just depends on what you know what you want it to look like okay what did I do here I did that okay I'm gonna wipe I always use a baby wipe, just go along that edge, clean it up. There I go. Even with it stuffed, I mean, it's, you can go kind of in a round. <laughs> And be stamping it afterwards. It's just a lot easier to do it when he's flat or she's flat. I think it's a she, don't you? Okay, there we go. Now we'll finish filling her. I'm going to put um, my lid back on my ink, otherwise, it will get everywhere. Wooden spoons. That's another thing to, that's what we always used when I was a kid. I remember my mom always getting out the wooden spoons and stuffing whatever. Oh, she made dolls. She would be stuffing the arms and the legs of the dolls. My mom did a little bit of everything. She was a baker. She was a seamstress. She made all kinds of Fabulous things. Just a little bit more. And then I'm going to take her back to the sewing machine. And I'm going to go ahead and sew up the bottom part of this. And then we'll decorate her. Okay, she's all sewn up. Now I'm going to take some ribbon. I'm going to angled one end and I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue and I kind of want it to go at an angle just so this sticks out kind of nicely Oop. 
be careful. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't put your finger right in the hot glue. I've got really <laughs> kind of immune fingers from hot glue because I've used it so much. So now the flower. This little flower is a little spastic. Um, if I were to like be doing quite a few of these, I think I'd throw it um, a pattern into my Cricut and cut it on the Cricut. I'm not sure. I have never cut fa fabric on my Cricut, honestly. I should give it a try someday, but um, I just kind of freehanded that. So for the leaf, I just, this is also felt, leaf is easy. You just kind of curve it and curve it. I'm just kind of make a long pointed oval. Okay, I'm going to do two, the littler one. So there's my leaves. Now my flower. I'm sure some of you guys <laughs> can do a better flower than I can. I don't know why that flowers look so spastic. Um, but it does. And I know it. So I just basically cut in from an edge. Then I pivoted my scissors. And then I cut out. And then I made a little rounded and that actually looks better than it originally came out, believe it or not. Another little V, pivot. Now you could buy something, you know, if you want to, to um, just to have something a little, um, oh, you know what would be super cute is those velvet flowers, those old fashioned, I'm not in screen again, I'm not showing you this, um, velvet flowers, you know, the old fashioned ones. Oh, that would be so cute. I wish I would have thought of that. I'm sure I've got some somewhere. I love those flowers. They remind me of my childhood. I'm not sure why. I think an Easter basket or an Easter chick I had or something when I was little. Oh, that's not too horrible. It's not fabulous, but it's not horrible. Anyway, I think something I had for Easter um, was had those on them so good childhood memories of that um so that and then I just took a secondary color and I just um made a circle super super simple I actually went to the store to try to find a printed fabric that I thought might be cute for this and I don't know about Anybody else, I get it stuck in my head. I want a certain something. And if I can't find that certain something, then I don't want to do it. <laughs> Just that simple. Um, but I had like an old-fashioned, kind of a chintz in mind. I used to use a lot in the bridal industry back in the 80s. I'm dating myself. Just glued it the little felt center and then put that in. And then we'll add the leaves. Oh, I got dripping glue, so I'm just gonna grab it off the <laughs> stringy. Tuck that little guy in there. Oh my gosh, I got string glue string everywhere. This is the stringiest glue I think I've ever dealt with. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's like cotton candy. Add a little leaf there. There we go. We have a cute little bunny. Be cute and kids at Easter baskets or just to decorate. Anyway, if you have any uh, questions about the products that I use today, um, you can go to our website at www.boutiquepaint.com. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye.